Hello, welcome to Legends of Our Time on GBC News and Ghana Television. My name is Gifty E.G. So he was born in Cape Coast in 1929. He holds a Doctor of Ministry from Emory University in Georgia, USA. As an educationist, he taught in Prempe College and at Wesley College and became principals of the colleges. A legend later became the Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education Service. As a lay preacher in the Methodist Church for many years, he was later ordained into ministry. At age 92, he's still strong, alert, and continues to work for the Lord together with his wife of 60 years and are blessed with children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Right Reverend Dr. Brew Riverson, a former Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education Service, is my guest for today. Reverend, thank you so much for this honor. Thank you. Indeed, I'm so grateful. Um, let's begin this interview by having you pray for us, especially now that we are in the fourth wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. So kindly. <laughs> Father, Father Lord, we, we thank you for this nation, Ghana, hmm. which we would like to say is your covenant nation. We thank you because of the love of mankind. That's why our Savior died that by his stripes all might be healed. So we present Ghana and the nations of the world before you in the wave of this COVID thing. We've been praying and we know you know the answer, but we'd like to be free from this COVID thing. Yes, and all who have suffered from it, we thank you for all those who've recovered. We thank you that we don't have to be attacked by it. We pray that all of us will take the necessary precautions. And please forgive us that so many of us don't seem to know the precautions and obey it. But forgive us and come in your mighty way to save this nation, Ghana, Amen. from the COVID. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, um, Reverend, Right Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Henry Brew Riverson. Thank you so much. So. Um, First of all, um, I learned you've been married for uh, 60 years. Yes. That's quite remarkable. Um, share with us the experience. Has the journey been that smooth? Well, um, in every relationship marriage, you can have troubles. Okay. But when you know, you know that it is God who makes marriages, oh. it makes things smooth and it makes you confident. Okay. And, but the two of you have to both agreed that you are not yourselves. You are the handiwork of God. This, I presume, I would like to t tell a lot of married couples okay. and that it works. God is the author of marriages and my own marriage makes me know that God is the author. Why do you say so? I did say so because from my own, my wife's account, mm. uh, she was the one who saw me in Wesley Cathedral, Kumasi, and immediately said she loved that man very much wow. and confessed to her sister. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. Mm. We were teachers in Prempe College in the year 1952. I had come from Worcester College, my, my, my junior brother, my immediate junior brother. I come from much more to school. He did science. I was geography and arts. So we were teaching at Prempe College. But my dad was a choir master and organist hmm. of the Wesley Cathedral and had introduced the cantata um, crucifixion. Okay. And there were solo parts of it. And he was always assuring the choirists when they came to this, that you would wait, we have some people who mm -hmm. sing those parts. But when we came 
and appeared. <laughs> you know, I think <laughs> that we made the mark with with the <laughs> girls. But this, my wife, was not one of them. Okay. People came to visit us at West, at Prempe College, but she was not one of them. She was praying. She loved somebody. Mm. But if you like the story, mm -hmm. I told it last share, Sunday. Share with us. One of those Sundays, we had closed from church, and there was a crowd there. I was standing there, and all I could see was an image of a lady mm. with a hat. It was a vision. So what? I don't know what this means. Mm -hmm. So I started looking for that lady. Wow. And I found her in the car. Mm. But I could not even talk to her as I should. I took an opportunity. <laughs> Were you shy? Oh, not, not that shy. I, I, I wanted an opportunity to speak to her. Okay. And I learned that she was a student of St. Louis Secondary School. Mm. So I took the opportunity to say, we are trying to get our sister and I, I hope that when she comes, oh. you will take care of her. Oh. That was all. <laughs> but when I got to Legon, I wrote to her. Mm -hmm. And as she herself says, I think she's the best to tell her own story. <laughs> she was so thrilled by, hey, this, this, this man has written to me. <laughs> and she just blessed her chest and she put it on her heart. That was the story was of the story. how it all began. But this is nine years before our marriage in 61. Okay. Even that nine years were full of troubles. But the time of her schooling was safe because we were communicating, we were communicating. I better leave the rest of the story, uh, but uh, because the vision that came, and finally, at the time of conference of my father and my mother, there had been troubles, and I had developed a friendship with someone. My father and mother had sent someone from Segendi mm -hmm. to Kumasi. To be your wife. To, for me to see if I... If you liked the person. Came by night train and went back the next day by night train. She was a guest high school student and she was from my mother's town, Anumabo. Mm -hmm. So they thought if they found a person like that, it would be all right. Suitable for you. But I had found a friend. And I was going to, I mentioned her first. And the immediate reaction of my dad was that, not that house. <laughs> Why, because of her background, personality, we don't what, know what exactly what it was the problem? What, we don't know up to today. I don't know. We haven't searched for it. But as a Cape Coast man, and the name was a Cape Coast name, he must have known what it hmm. was. And that said, so I said, what about my friend? Victoria, mm -hmm. we sat down quietly, both my father and mother. She's a good girl. <laughs> so I came to know that our parents are important mm. when we seek to enter marriage. marriage. I developed a friendship at Wesley College, mm. 50, 51. Mm. Fifty-two, she was visiting us at Pembroke College. Mm. But my mother had not met her. She, she only heard that, hey, I was preparing a certain kind mm -hmm. of person. Mm -hmm. She said one sentence. It was enough for me yeah. to decide that, no, it is not that way. It is by God's design, immediately after that, it was by God's design that our friendship, the friendship with my wife began. began and I should have known that 
This is God's making mm. and nothing should break it down. Let's look at the role of um, a healthy marriage in the home. How does a, a healthy marriage affect, I mean, the, 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 the home, the kids, family, everybody? <laughs> yeah, you have, I mean, lived it. So share that experience with us. Yes, a healthy family mm. um, really makes a home. I could say that uh, I, in my family of 10, um, and our father, the famous musician, I.D. Riverson, mm -hmm. um, and my mother, trained at a, a, a Roman Catholic convent in Cape Coast. Okay. She was a good mother and disciplinarian in the home. <laughs> my dad was a worker. Mm a teacher mm -hmm. who, 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 for me, the best teacher <laughs> I have ever seen is my father. Your father. And he was meticulous. Mm. He was duty bound. And he would go to, to, to school with his typewriter. Mm -hmm. And after school, he would go straight, if it's a Tuesday, he would go straight to the church. And the third day, he goes straight to the church mm. as a choir master and organist. We had a good home. I was the, a good home. I always, I, mm. my father never built a house, mm. but the one, two, three places we lived in Cape Coast before my father was transferred to Kumasi to Wesley College to teach. I always. <laughs> felt good good in our house yeah. because there was discipline and there was the prayer center uh, which always my mother mm. was responsible for mm. Mm. so we enjoy this we yeah. enjoy this mm. Mm. but we had a handicap somewhere okay and it brought a little problem to us and I championed it at Mm -hmm. As I was doing it, I made a simple comment. <laughs> that because of my aunt, we had trouble. <laughs> so, but um, in our own family, my wife and I, my, my wife would, in the, in the early, about 5.30, would be ringing the bell. Mm -hmm. Prayer time, prayer time. And it's not the, the children, some of the children didn't like this. <laughs> and they wanted to sleep. <laughs> and if they did it, <laughs> you put water on, <laughs> on them to wake up. <laughs> to wake up. And Tough woman, eh? <laughs> I think uh, we had a discipline, but we loved her as well. Sure. And worked for her. Hmm. This was a time when, at Winneba, when we grew up, we go to the forest, mm. five miles away mm. for firewood okay. at that time. And we enjoyed it. And as children, we helped my mother sell her goods. Mm. And it was in child labor. Today it was not child labor. Today, child yes. yes. Mm. We loved it. My part, I was selling kerosene. <laughs> 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 but this was an aspect of our life, yeah. and we enjoyed it. Mm. And, and I mean, it, we had a peaceable mm. house, yeah. and we were proud of it. We want to hear our children now mm. bear testimony to this discipline that they had. Yeah. They are all in the Lord, mm. and they bear testimony. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it, 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 we, we, we say, sometimes I tell them that now we are encouraged by you, yeah. by your faith. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's good to know. Your, your surname, uh, Riverson, is, is, is not Ghanaian. Yes, uh, my father's name is a very interesting name. Mm -hmm. It's the first of its kind. My father said that his father, or 
previous to that, when he was going to school, they wanted a name for him. And they said, you are a child of the river. Why can't we call you Riverson? Which? And this is, um, 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 I, I, I recall that river. The mother was crossing this river near to uh, Asa, near to uh, uh, Anamabo. Mm -hmm. And she was due to, she got delivered okay. at the bank of the river. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, it's a translation oh. of the idea that she's an Insuba. Insuba River Sin. Which would have been a beautiful name but it became Riverson. But Riverson is a beautiful name and mm -hmm. it's a Ghanaian name. And a unique. And, and very unique. I won't change it for anything for because it's been a, a, a famous name. Mm. Our father needs, I also say, this man mm. <laughs> needs a posthumous award. <laughs> <laughs> and I will explain to anybody. Mm. He worked like a horse. Okay. And at the end, I think he died too early, <laughs> at the age of 66. Okay. Yeah. But he was a worker. He was a worker. Hmm. We don't work like him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's good to know, I mean, the history behind the, the, the name. same name, the name, very interesting name, River Sin. That's good. My so, name is not a half native name. Okay. It's Brew Riverson. Brew Riverson. And my father's surname is Riverson. But at one point he said, I'd like you to attach the name given you mm -hmm. to my name to know, to preserve the history. So, mm -hmm. I was very, from, from class one mm -hmm. to 27, the name was Riverson. Mm. But when he said that thing, it set me thinking. So, my O level is Riverson. But when I was going to, to university, I had made it Brewerson. Brewerson. So they asked me, why is it, mm. this is your certificate, mm. it shows that you are EHB mm -hmm. Riverson. So I had to sign an affidavit oh, okay. to get the Brewerson. But the Brewerson is an interesting story. <laughs> th th thank you <laughs> for, for that piece of history. Um, You've talked a bit about your, your family, family life, how interesting it was at the time. Let's look at your um, school, that aspect of your life. You as a student from the elementary stage to the university level, uh, at what age did you enter uh, elementary school and which school was that? Well, I would say I started school in 1935 when I was six years old, okay. I think. And uh, it was a Methodist school. And my father was teaching in the school that we, we, we had. So the mental school was class one, class two, class three. Okay. Entering class three, we had to follow our father on his transfer from Cape Coast to Kumasi. So, class three, standard one, standard two was spent in Kumasi when my dad was a teacher at Wesley College. And um, on his transfer in 1940 to Winneba, we joined him, we went to Winneba. And again, it was a secondary school. Mm 
Hmm. It, it was Methodist school. Okay. And uh, my dad was the headmaster of the section where I was going to school. My junior brothers were in the town school, the infant from a, a class one to standard one was in the town. And they joined us when they were in standard two. So our elementary schools was Methodist. Okay. And uh, we had a very interesting time. Oh. We were reasonably intelligent students. <laughs> Uh, the children of uh, a, a teacher mm. had some advantages. Our home mm. was the home of other friends who came so we could work arithmetic. Okay. By the time I was in standard six and standard seven, arithmetic was was my specialty, <laughs> and we can be sure in arithmetic. When we are scoring, we mm -hmm. can score 100. Yeah. Other people with other subjects will score less. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the standard seven, standard six, I was not a top student. Okay. Standard seven, I was the top student. What happened? And the first student in standard six, in standard seven, I was stopping in the class. Mm. So Were you a learning extra or what accounted for that transition? I, th I, th I think the, that my arithmetic was doing well. Okay. If, if, if you get your marks in a arithmetic 100, mm. if you don't get 100, you get <laughs> 87. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when we feel one of the uh, 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 special uh, second uh, um, the first one is mental. Mm. Okay. The second one is, uh, uh, they call it uh, problem. I'm forgetting exactly how they call it. But I like the second one. <laughs> and I was good in it. Mm. When we get out of a school, everybody would like to see, what's your answer? <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> became the standard. <laughs> if you gave the standard, if you don't get it, you don't get it. Mm. But in standard seven, I was the top student. And yet, when the standard seven examination came, mm. and the first result was an, uh, uh, was the, the first result was uh, a telegram mm. from Cape Coast, mm -hmm. inviting four of us to go for an interview okay. for scholarship. And my name was not in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I carried the telegram to my father, who oh. was at the choir, choir, standing in front of the choir and at the organ. And I said, Mpa, mm -hmm. this is a telegram. <laughs> and my name is not in it. <laughs> 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 that thing upset me so much. Oh. But later development of that mm. ended my mother taking me to the minister, Ivan Sapir, mm -hmm. said, your son has been crying wildly. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the advice of Ivan Sapir was, my son, now you have passed your entrance to pass from mm -hmm. Who knows what will happen to you when you get there? And that was like a prophecy. <laughs> right at the classroom, eh, right at the classroom, they are arranging the classes mm -hmm. by the standard of the uh, 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 by the standard of the entrance exam. Mm. I was the only one in the A class. Four of us went to classroom, including three of those who were invited to Cape Coast mm. as distinction students. So you had to pay. Oh, I was paying. Okay. And <laughs> I'm not sure that mm. they, they had the scholarships either. Mm. Mm. And I was in the only one in the top class, A. Okay. Two of us were in the second class. Mm. The 
one was in the C class. And that's how it did throughout that. And at the end of it, when the results came, I was the only one with grade one. Wow. The two people in mm -hmm. B had grade two. Mm -hmm. The one in grade C had grade three. Oh, impressive. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the fact of the matter is, I was the first to go to a university, or the first to gain a degree, Mm. I'm the only one with a doctorate degree. That prophecy in my Is post, it from your family or from Infant Spim? This record? This record that is it's throughout. That is I believe that <laughs> it's it's a family okay. trait. I believe that we gained it from our dad. Okay. Um our dad was so good in speaking. We, almost all of us, have spoken like our dad. <laughs> but I had an extra advantage in the university mm. because of the pronunciation that we did. Mm. And even with my postgraduate, uh, where pronunciation was also compulsory. Mm. At the end of it, mm. they thought I was speaking like a Ghanaian who speaks like received English. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. You speak impeccable English. You know. <laughs> yeah. So that, 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 that's so far mm. how we went and how we went through. Uh, and, and we think that uh, we had a good beginning because we had a good home. Okay. We had a good a home with a library, mm. a home with a uh, discipline okay. with a father who was himself a headmaster of a school. Mm. Yeah. And I think that pushed us quite a bit. Uh, uh, Reverend, I'm sorry we have to take a, a quick break and uh, when we Amen. come back uh, we'll continue. We'll go to University of the Gold Coast, <laughs> University of Ghana now, and then share the experience with us. But we can take one, one of your favorite uh, Methodist hymns and then we'll, we'll take that break. Hymn number one, I'm suggesting. Ooh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great redeemed praise, to stress through all the years abroad, the honors of thy name, the honors Oh, thy name. Thank you so much. So we'll take a quick break and uh, when we come back, we'll continue with the discussion. Just right. joined us. The program right. is Legends of Our Time on GBC News and um, Ghana Television. We'll take a quick break and when we come back, we'll talk more with uh, Reverend Brew Riverson. Don't go away. Welcome back. It's still Legends of Our Time on GBC News and Ghana Television on Legends of Our Time. We speak to our heroes who continue to inspire us. And of course, today my guest is Right Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Henry Brew Riverson, a former Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education Service. Okay, so um, Reverend, um, from Infant Spim School, you went to University of the Gold Coast at the time, and uh, your major was in geography. Why that particular uh, course? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I think that uh, I, de I developed a love for nature, mm. and also um, a love for geography. And you have mathematical parts in geography mm -hmm. and all that. Okay. And it helped. And why I made it later in geography was that at school, mm. my marks were not, I, I did not get too many prizes. But at least the two prizes I got, mm. probably from five, were geography and religious knowledge. Mm. 
And it, it's amazing that uh, these two subjects determined Your my career, career in path. life. Okay. Um, so I love geography and uh, for some reason we did the intermediate course in Legon. And uh, when you're doing that thing, you, you, to, to, to succeed to do an honest geography, mm. um, you needed to do, study French mm. a little bit. And you are tested <laughs> before you are selected into the honest. And luckily, I was only one of two who succeeded to do the honest geography. Honest geography. So the, 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 the geography aspect mm. is that one. And I learned uh, during your time, it was uh, one lecturer to a student in terms of your elective. Was that the case during your time as well? No. no. Okay. In, in, in a sense, uh, when you are doing, in a sense, when, when, when you are doing honest, mm. um, like, I was doing economic geography. I had, I had a, a, a master and a, a, a lecturer, and I think a one-to-one -one thing was there. Uh, so, in a sense, there was a one-to-one -one sense because when you are set work, yeah. he will meet you, and it, it's not classroom discussion. It's you and him. Oh, okay. So just one, one thing was there, more or less. It was there. It was the student population at the time, because now we have a lot of students <laughs> <laughs> at your school, University of Ghana. Well, I, mean. I think uh, the, the student, uh, like we started, the University of Gold Coast, mm. we started at Ashimoto site. Mm. And we, we were in the big hall, all of us could be seated. At, at, at the room. So I think, um, I don't know precisely how mm. many we were. Okay. But it could be anything like 400 to 500. To 500. Yes. Wow. And which batch were you? Which intake of um, students of the Gold I, Coast? I, I remember that the batch that we had was, one, was about 150. And the intermediate uh, 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 <laughs> examination reduced us to 75. 75. Yes, for the arts, arts, arts section. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at the entry. Um, the, the, were you one of the pioneers or which? Um, I was not a pioneer. I, I was not a pioneer. I, I was at a, t at a point where the university was gradually moving to Legon. Okay. And uh, there were people ahead of us. Okay. Uh, so from University of Ghana, finally you became a teacher like your father. Yes. Was it a directly? I, I was uh, because I was a teacher from Wesley College. Okay. I was on study leave mm. um, in my intermediate and and uh, mm. final uh, uh, degree, mm. and uh, and then. Also, it, it, it was so, so, can you imagine that in our time, mm. when we moved to Aquafu Hall, everybody had a room to himself. Now he goes there and has uh, a six or something in, 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 a, in, in a room, which we had all to ourselves. So things have changed. And I learned you also treated well. We were treated in terms well. Of, um, I mean, at the dining hall, that. we were treated like gentlemen in a formal dinner. The evening uh, meal was a formal dinner, and we, 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 we put on our gowns. And the, 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 uh, our teachers were there at the senior table, and we, we were served. Mm. They served us food at the tables, and so <laughs> we were really... <laughs> and that was a period before independence. 
Oh, yes. That was the period before independence. How was Ghana then at the time? <laughs> when we had the opportunity <laughs> to... <laughs> well, if, if you ask, I, 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 I would say that we had a beautiful time. Mm. When, when, but we were politically conscious. Okay. We were politically conscious. I, I, for instance, at Western College, I had, hadn't, as a student at Western College, I, I hadn't uh, gone to, we were not in politics. Mm. But in 1951, we had a mock parliament. Okay. And I, 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 could, I we, 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 we just took after uh, British names. So I was in the Labour Party, mm. and I remember that my party won, and I was the Prime Minister for Labour Party. <laughs> <laughs> that was at Westy College. <laughs> now, and far back in the in in the school in school, 1948. You know, it was 47 that uh, the United. Um, UGCC, United Gold Coast Convention, invited Nkrumah to come. Mm. It was Dr. Nkrumah to mm. come. This uh, uh, um, time, we're still involved in things that were happening. <laughs> if, if, if we were on vacation mm. and they said there was a rally, I would go there. Hey, you were a political animal then. <laughs> <laughs> I would go there. And when, when we heard that, he said, today, come and come on, he's coming. Mm -hmm. We were all scared. We were all hipped up. Charged up. Charged up. The people gave a name to Kwame and Kuma. So the Kwame and Kuma would sell uh, the party. It was not considered a party, there, but a movement. Mm. So, when in 1948, oh. um, as a result of the um, uh, um, uh, Nana, a, a new money uh, appeal for uh, prices to go down and so on, they arrested the six people, oh. the six, the big six, the big six. We went on strike. <laughs> the schools in Cape Coast bathroom at the south of um, St. Augustine's. St. Augustine's. We went on strike and then we heard that the university had also more or less joined. Mm. It were exciting times. They were exciting times. <laughs> <laughs> we go to school and uh, uh, in the morning we go and we don't go to classes. We go and take our breakfast and then we we'll go to the senior field <laughs> and junior field. Mm, yeah. And it did that for about three days. Okay. And then one afternoon, when we did our usual thing, we, we, we went to, 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 the, to the senior field and came back. That precise afternoon, We woke up and marched to the headmaster's office. And the song we carried was, we want our petition signed. We want our petition signed. We want our petition, our petition, our petition. <laughs> and no one wanted him or his face also to show up as a leader. Mm -hmm. So what did you do? Oh, you would bend and, 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 and just sing over. And we got to the headmaster's office. They said he was not there. He had gone home. Hey, she! We, <laughs> we, we, we ran past the dining hall, mm -hmm. through the uh, forest, mm -hmm. and got to the, uh, where the uh, staff houses were. And we were going towards the headmaster's house. And some of the members of staff were there. Our, our, our chaplain, who was the FCM grant <laughs> at that time, uh, the first uh, uh, chairman of uh, uh, the Methodist Church, first African chairman of the Methodist, 
he ran and ran and ran. He was running into, yeah, I've seen you, I've seen you, I've seen you. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to take our um, second break. <laughs> we'll be back shortly. Wonderful. <laughs> So, yeah, so that was the <laughs> <laughs> So the program is still legends of our time, and then we are hanging around with the uh, right Reverend uh, Bill Riverson. Who will take a quick break and uh, return shortly. Please stay. Welcome back. It's still legends of our time on GBC News and uh, Ghana Television, and today. My guest is Right Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Henry Brew Riverson, a former Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education Service. So we've, we've begun your, the conversation around your, your career path, uh, but let's look at a, a key highlight of it when you became a Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education um, Service. Um, occupying that role, uh, what would you say were some of your uh, achievements uh, uh, as a professional? I had a very, very brief time okay. at, at, at that. Uh, this was in 1986. This was the year in which, uh, by April, oh. I was invited to the castle and they said they wanted the, the the, the uh, director general, and uh, eventually uh, they called me back mm. after two weeks and said, "You know, we, we called you when we, we said we wanted a, um, a, di a director general, yeah. but the cabinet has decided that they don't want anybody from GES, okay. so they bring." Uh, someone uh, to, so they went for Professor Jamba oh. from Kekus University and we want you to be the deputy. His deputy so that you can help him as a person from the GES. And then at that time I was as a minister so I said oh maybe I need, I need to go and tell my uh, my president. Oh. So he said are you saying no to the chairman? <laughs> I said, I'm not secretary new to the chairman, but I'm a minister. Before I From say the yes church. to you, I need to, to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was the end of the conversation yeah. that I needed to. I left the office about 5.15. By 6 o'clock, was, it was reported that the news had come on the sixth school. So the, <laughs> the, the appointments for the director general and the deputy director were announced. Hmm. That very day, they, yeah. they said, I said they would do asking me if for I would opinion. do it. And yet, by 6 p.m., I was already <laughs> appointed. So hmm. that's. Uh, uh, and then, you know, they, they, they instituted reforms in hmm. education, okay. whereby practical uh, work will be done. So, as, as a Deputy Director General, we had to tour quite a lot of the country, mm. meeting teachers, discussing this thing with them, mm. um, and it, it, it was really part of the challenges of that education. Mm. But, but it was interesting. And it, one interesting aspect of it was that mm -hmm. when I was appointed Deputy Director General, uh, soon my Secretary of Education was my student at Western College. <laughs> <laughs> and my staff member at Western College. But he was very, very, very respectful. Mm. When I go to his office, immediately he will stand up. Mm. And if someone is there, he says, this is my principal. Mm. That was uh, Mohammed Ben Abdallah, okay. who, who was uh, education secretary at the time. Mm. Uh, I mean, and uh, we, we kept the friendship. Mm. He later became uh, the, the, uh, in, in the head of uh, um, Legon, uh, fine arts and uh, mm. um, 
but he was a good actor, good student and good actor, very well behaved, and he carried that uh, to the office of the education. So, what happened was that that very year, at the conference of the Methodist Church, at the end of the conference, there were some changes in office when the secretary of the conference was transferred to Cape Coast as the chairman of Cape Coast. And at the end of the conference, the question was, who is secretary of conference? And immediately they said, Blue Riverson. <laughs> because actually my name had been put down for 87 conference. Okay. But the conference rising up mm. was without a secretary of conference. And immediately they said, Blue Riverson. <laughs> so it became a challenge. I said, hey, my name is Emily Deputy So when I went to education and I said, this is a crisis and we need to go and see our president. So I went to see the president who was uh, Jacob Stevens at the time, mm. Dr. Jacob Stevens, Reverend Dr. Jacob Stevens. And I had to go with my secretary of education, Ben Abdallah. Mm. And the arrangement was that, hey, leave Bruce Riverson to do his work as uh, deputy director general. Mm. And you can keep him. You And the chair said, we have uh, assistant, <laughs> assistant uh, secretaries. So he can keep, keep his work mm. as uh, uh, deputy director. Deputy general. General. And whenever there's a meeting of the GPC, which mm. is the when conference is not in sitting, GPC is the organ that takes control and controls the church. So when there's the GPC meeting, he will come and sit as the secretary. Yeah. So that's what we did. Yeah. Sit at, but immediately arranged so that in a year's time, I can retire. Yeah. So that's what happened. That was what happened. Yes. That, that, that's interesting to know. Um, as a former Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education Service, um, how would you access or assess our um, current educational system? You know? <laughs> Let me pick your mind. Edu education, education, <laughs> education always depends on the individual teacher. Just as I said that if I had to rate my dad, I said I've not seen any teacher who, has, who, works as, who worked as hard as my dad. And the, the, the quality and the performance of education depends on the indi individual teacher. Mm. Teachers took pride in their classes. And even though they were using the cane, they were using the cane to, to, to produce results. Even though I had an experience which was <laughs> most unnecessary. Uh, <laughs> but this is how you looked at education at that time. So you so you, you, you prided yourself by your efforts. I remember that when my dad went to Winneba as headmaster, he took upon himself as, as an independent man to set a, 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 a examinations in English, mathematics, and general knowledge himself. And he introduced paperwork, paper, 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 examination papers with his own, with his own resources, typographical. That is, with his own um, typewriter, typewriter, and um, his own. What, what do you call that? <laughs> you 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 run off and get copies, so that. Every student had his own paper. At the time when they were writing on the board, questions on the board. So 
he immediately transformed the school and the school, the very first term, time, we never had four distinctions, mm. something that they had not had for some time. That included people like Chris Nsaki, A. A. Mensa, um, um, and two others. Teachers wanted to have their names attached to their performance. Mm. Do we have that now? <laughs> when people, and my father would, would bind all these papers, take them to his house, and correct them himself, mm. and send back the results. This is a teacher, this is somebody who, 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 who was working his heart out. We don't have, I don't, it's rare to have that, to, to, to think that you are gaining. I was at a private school yesterday at a carol service. And that's cool. How hard they work. The students work and the teachers work. I, 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 I envied, I have always envied that school. <laughs> it's a miss, the school called Mispa. They work so hard. And I think some of our schools do that. Yeah. Some teachers do that. So the credit goes to how well the individual teacher performs. Performs. And all that you've said, you think it's, can we still um, imbibe it into an educational system or it's too late? If, if it's when you, you, you get into training colleges, this is where the spirit of endeavor and the spirit of, of hard work mm. should be started. And I think that many colleges are having that. They, yeah. should, they should do that. Okay. They should do that. Let's look at one aspect of your life. You as a, a, a publisher, you've published a number of uh, publications, um, some of them with the Methodist Book Depot. And this big one here, <laughs> It says, uh, Leadership and Service in a Ghanaian um, Community by Beniza Henry Brew Rivers in 1983. This was uh, the result of my doctor of ministry. Oh, okay. And That's your thesis. My, my thesis. Ah. And I was so concerned at the time mm -hmm. I was leaving Ghana by the frequent changes in government. And part of my concern when I got to uh, uh, America was how can we get people to work together? Anytime there was a coup, the, 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 the charge was that, oh, they don't mind anybody and they just think of themselves. And, and that's where the leadership and service came in. They were always thinking that, they don't serve us. How can we attain leadership with service? That's how this book came. Came about. And uh, the, 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 the doctor of ministry required that there's a practical part of it. Yeah. And I, because I was an outsider, yeah. I needed to go home and put into practice what I was Mm. Putting so I came back to the college, mm. and with the selected um, staff and students, mm. worked over ten weeks okay. with this uh, set of people, and and by the time we had acquired all that, we had tried it out that we should we should so train ourselves that you will train others also. This is the uh, essence of Second Timothy 2, 2. Mm -hmm. Whatever is given to you, uh, be honest enough and dedicated enough to give it to others also. Mm -hmm. And so this, this is uh, what we were doing at Worcester College. And at the end of it, um, 
I had to go back six months hmm. and put everything together and, and come back again. Hmm. So that my concern about Ghana mm -hmm. is what gave me a doctorate degree. So that has conditioned me hmm. for what I do even up to now. Until now. That's good to know. And then these ones, um, Christianity and culture, Christ transforms all cultures. The body of Christ in the ministry of transformation, leadership and service in a Ghanaian community. I think uh, and, uh, this yes. one came from your, your, yes. your, your thesis. My, my thesis. From your thesis. I, I, when when, when I, I got to Accra from Westy College in 1985, the the, the the material that is here mm. and the titles that you see are what I was sharing with mm. full gospel chapters, mm. uh, uh, body of Christ, uh, the, the church in the ministry of transformation. I will go to one chapter, they give me three weeks, I speak about that one. Mm. And they know I've also talked about Christianity and culture. They would also invite me and I'll, I'll treat it for another three weeks. Mm. I did that in Accra in many chapters. And later on people said, hey, why don't you pull these things? So these things came together okay. and by uh, uh, 2007 they were ready. We launched them mm. in Accra mm. and Kumasi. Okay. And the Santini got his copies. Wow. And so my concern I expressed there. And the idea was that train the church to use the idea of training others also. Yes. And transform the church itself, which is itself a ministry of transformation. And so this, this is my ministry, <laughs> and uh, I, I think that as I write my articles, mm. you see the concern I've had about this country working together. I mean, and the, the, the latest of it is the article I wrote in 2020 after the elections. Mm. Studying the, 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 studying the, uh, the results, I said, no, God is speaking to all Ghanaians. So I wrote an article, God is teaching, is speaking to all Ghanaians. And the essence was that, what, do you see what has happened? Ever since Nkuma came, this country has never worked together. Why? Always partisan things. And the, part, the partisan people, they, they, they want, they, to, to get it, it, it winner takes all syndrome has been there. I've been I've traveled, I, I wrote an article on winner takes all syndrome at one time and said we must see all this. We must learn to work together. So I took advantage, published that one paper, sent copy to the speaker with the copy to uh, the leader of uh, the majority leader and the minority leader. Mm. When um, could Robert not... Michael Quay. Michael Quay left. I sent the same message to the new speaker. But the level that we've got into with our politics, uh, what you're proposing, um, how realistic uh, does it appear? <laughs> <laughs> You know, everyone must be as humble as possible and to know that it's not only parliament that is interested in the government. Mm. Every person, every person is a politician. Mm. And every person is supposed to be involved in the development of the country. Mm. This is how I run Wesley College. Mm. And this is what I continue to carry that the battle is not for a few people. Mm. It's for all of us. 
and I, I, I want the opportunity to speak to my, my, my children. Everyone there in Parliament is my child. Remember what happened some few days ago? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and that, that, that calls for, for I, I, I've been trying to. No, I don't know what they receive. You know, when you write to somebody, you, you expect a reply. A reply. And you are concerned about what happened. Have you? So I've been trying to get personally to speak to uh, at least the leaders mm. of the parties. Mm. If I don't do that, I'm not doing my work as a minister. Mm. And I don't do that my work as a citizen of Ghana. And I have been concerned every time. So, articles, when, when we had a problem, uh, this, this is, this is uh, an open letter to the Electoral Commissioner. This was an open letter to the Electoral Commissioner. Which year in, was that? In 2015. Okay. When there was the same problem with the register. So, this current thing, this current register mm. that uh, uh, the register that uh, 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 I sent a copy of this okay. to the current uh, and told uh, my concern mm. and my current concern. Mm. So mm. <laughs> most articles I go to the um, um, P, the public. Um, uh, news, 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 news. Newspapers. Newspapers. And hand it over. I go to the uh, Asante Pioneer uh. to a point the editors just said, oh, we thank you for your articles. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when I get your article, I don't even read it, but I publish find space it. and publish it. Mm. And I think many of us, mm. I, I, I wrote an article, um, I owe it to God, Ghana, and the world. Mm. That was the central theme. Yes. That is, anybody who's been through university, anybody who's been through, who has a, a reasonable education should be responsible for others. Mm. And that's how we should do. It's like families. We should, do, we should protect our families. We should teach our families. And no, no what, what, what happens? I cannot see how it, it should happen to anybody to go into an open fight. We are all ashamed of it. They are ashamed of it. And I think um, we'll see our way through. <laughs> Reverend, you know I have a lot to ask you, but uh, <laughs> fortunately my, my time is limited. Amen. So, so quickly, let's talk about your nuclear family, uh, your wife, uh, how many children, grandchildren, I know you have great, great, great. <laughs> and I know one of them was an actor. Uh, was that your son? Actor, yes. Yes. Then, uh, our, our, senior, uh, our, our first child. Oh, okay. Our first child, and he speaks better than I do. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we, we have uh, six children, mm. all of whom were born between 1961 and 1973, okay. when I was at Wesley College. And between the six of them, they produced 18 grandchildren. Mm -hmm. But we haven't had the grandchildren multiplying yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So where are they now? I know one where, is an where? actor, which the one you said, um, the first, first child. Is an actor. What about the other? The, the actor has two children. Mm. The one is a doctor mm. at the Legon Hospital, okay. um, and the other is a photographer mm. who was trained at uh, the university. Uh, Nafti. Nafti, and she's working with uh, um, oh this this university um, in 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 Accra. Also in Legon. Um, UPSA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's well today. And then uh, we've got four of them in the UK doing various things. Mm. 
The last and, one. And the last, the last one is an economist and is, is a, that is an accountant. But in the religious life, he's become, he and his wife are both ministers okay. to their church. And uh, the last before him, um, he and his wife are in the States. So um, we, 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 in these difficult days, mm -hmm. you don't have them mm, coming, coming around. around. Mm. So in 19, um, two years ago, when I was mm. 90, <laughs> um, they all came. All of them were here. Yes. Mm. But this time, mm. <laughs> they are saying we are not in normal times, so you can't agree yes, with them. Yes. Um, let me ask my final question. So, of all your achievements, which one would you say is very dear to your heart? I had an experience uh, 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 as a secretary of conference. That was in 1989, when there was a rift in the church. And one minister said on my 80th birthday that he himself would be chairman for the 80th birthday. But he was chairman with another friend of mine. And he said, but for this man, the church would have been split into two. Mm. But it's not me. The experience was not me. And I, want, and I told him that what happened in 89 in the conference in Sunyani was an act of God. He dealt with me personally, waking me up in the night mm. and dictating words, which mm -hmm. I took down. <laughs> so when we wanted to resolve the issue, and we went to GPC members and so on. Everybody spoke. When I got up and read what had happened to me, the way that was, they said, we have a resolution. <laughs> I think that that period, you know, it's always a question of listening to the other, learning to work together. And I think that that was my greatest time. And it was not mine. It was a work of God. And finally, finally, what would you want to leave with us? I mean, the young ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, as for the young ones, I think that we as parents are responsible for our young ones. Those are the university and are the place where is the is the price you set to yourself. The price you set to yourself. You are made in the image of God. And if individuals will realize this, that this is the wonder of mankind, this is the wonder of man, wonder of woman, to realize that you were in the image of God, that should humble you. That should humble you. And I think that uh, when you start with that at home with your children, with the groups you move within, try to, to, to speak to, to... When I went to uh, Emory, the first thing you learn is the, the need to speak to people. Mm. The need to have the courage to, to share with people. Yeah. And, 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 and that is so also for every meeting, every staff meeting, a past staff meeting which has the concern for each other. You, 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 you start with sharing the experiences you've been through. Mm. And if anybody has, has a, a solution, it just goes like that. That's the experience I had when I <laughs> entered uh, United, uh, 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 Emory. Mm. in the um, um, uh, graduate school of, uh, um, anyway. Yeah, in, in but, U but USA. You, 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 you learn, and it was my experience right through. Mm. The experience was from the, 
um, when I went to Singapore in 76, where we did um, training people um, that is leaders so that those leaders will share their experience with other leaders mm. and that, that, that visit to Singapore really shaped me for the rest of, of my uh, university graduate work in the mm. States mm. and which I've transferred to Ghana. Mm. This is me mm -hmm. and as many as much as I have time I will share with others mm. what I've gained so that they also pass it on to others. To others. Right, Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Henry Brew Riverson, thank you so much for this honor. Indeed, we are so grateful. And uh, I mean, we all see Ayuko, you've contributed so much to our country, Ghana, and we are so proud of you. Thank you so much, sir, for this opportunity. Thank you as well for giving me this opportunity to appear with GBC whom I served <laughs> for a number of years oh, okay. when I was with, as, as a, board, a board board member. A board member. And uh, um, I'm happy that um, you, you fished me out. <laughs> Thank you. We are so grateful. Yes. Thank you. The program has been legends of our time on GBC News and also Ghana Television. Uh, my guest for today has been Right, Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Henry Brew Riverson, a former Deputy Director General, Ghana Education Service, and also a minister with the Methodist Church. My name is Gifty EJ. Thank you so much for watching. We'll come your way same time next week. Until then, bye for now.